So here we go, off to Rome on Ita's brand new A321 Neo. It's gonna be a blast. Yes, today I get to fly one of Europe's newest aircraft. ETA Airways A321neo has been launched without too much fanfare. I flew their predecessor airline Alitalia quite a few times, including on long haul, and I loved my times in the sky with them. But as I remarked a few years ago, in fact, I can't remember a time when Alitalia didn't have money trouble. Alitalia's financial situation was so bad it had its own Wikipedia page, and eventually, in 2021, the airline folded and imploded quicker than a bad calzone. Alitalia was reborn as ETA Airways with a striking new livery and a new outlook on life, and today I get to check out their brand new business class seats on this shiny A321neo, and spoiler alert, I was rather impressed. Join me as I review the lounge, seat, service and food and so much more on this two hour long 897 mile flight between the British and Italian capital cities. We're going from London to Rome with Eat Airways. Let's fly. Good afternoon from a very rainy London Heathrow Airport Terminal 4. We're really lucky here in the UK that so many airlines choose to debut new aircraft en route to London. I'm travelling light today, carrying just some hand luggage, so no need to waste time checking in. Business class of course gets priority check-in if you use it, and fast-track security. Terminal 4 houses the SkyTeam Alliance Airlines as well as some of the major Gulf carriers. Back before Terminal 5 opened, it was British Airways' main long-haul base and housed Concorde flights. I've got to say, it's so strange being back here at Terminal 4. This terminal actually closed during the pandemic and it's been over five years since I came through the front door here. It has changed a little bit, but mostly it just feels like a big nostalgia dump for me. The SkyTeam lounge is actually closed. That is where I would normally be hanging out right now. But the SkyTeam Airlines and ETA Airways are using the Plaza Premium Lounge, which in my view is a lot better. Plaza Premium is a pretty reliable lounge brand and I've yet to be disappointed by one, but with the SkyTeam lounge now closed, I'm about to be confronted with the fact that there is a real crowding problem here. Unfortunately, this lounge is absolutely rammed and there is just about nowhere to sit and certainly nowhere quiet to work. This problem has got worse in general since COVID and my view is you shouldn't stay in lounges which have too many people in. There's less personal space here than in the terminal itself and that just seems wrong. However, there is a solution just a hundred yards away. This is the Blush Lounge, also operated by Plaza Premium. I got in here courtesy of my Priority Pass card. This used to be the El Al King David Lounge and as you can see, is a lot quieter. There is one downside. As far as I could tell, no alcohol was served. I guess a hangover <laughs> from El Al's days operating the lounge as they're a dry airline. However, there is a really good buffet, including some hot options, and I'd recommend this lounge every time if you can get in and value a bit of peace and quiet. Our aircraft has just landed from Rome, so let's head to the gate and check out this brand new Airbus A321neo. Somewhere I've not been for a while, the observation deck at Terminal 4, and the only place I can see my aircraft arrive. Well, try to see it arrive anyway. This is an ETA Airways A321neo, fully equipped with long-haul style cabins. You heard that right, it's a regular Neo, not an LR, with just 165 seats. These are meant for medium haul routes to places like Tel Aviv in Israel, Dakar in Senegal and Accra in Ghana. The blue colour is really striking and, like Italy's sports teams, takes inspiration from the Savoy blue colour of the historic Royal Kingdom of Italy. Today's video sponsor is Sterling Pacific, who, as you might have noticed from some of the shots in the video so far, have sent me this fantastic 35-litre carry-on case. 
This case is the real deal. They've tailored it to meet the needs of frequent flyers and boy does it look the part. On this trip, I tweeted a picture of the case. It's definitely the sort of accessory that makes people take notice. Sterling Pacific has worked so hard to engineer this absolute Rolls Royce of a case, substituting cheap plastic parts for a full 5052 aluminium construction with A380 aluminium corners. The case features two large wheels which are great for control when hurrying to or from your gate. They're also perfect for rough terrain too. And talking of rough handling, the impact bearing ridges protecting the case and the glorious Italian leather handle make sure it stays looking great for ages. Aesthetically, this luggage really floats my boat. It feels like the sort of case you'd carry nuclear codes in. It's so reassuringly well built and solid. At the same time, I love how manoeuvrable this case is, perfectly balanced even when carrying it briefcase style. I took this case on a real tour, onto Manchester via a couple of trains to go to a Christmas party and even subjecting it to the rigours of London bus travel. Sterling Pacific is not the cheapest option, but it is an uncompromising option if you really like your luggage. This is the best case I've ever owned and the company has provided you, my viewers, with a special $300 discount code. Take advantage, support the channel, and get yourself equipped today. Use code WING when purchasing at sterlingpacific.com forward slash WING. So here we go, off to Rome on Ita's brand new A321neo. It's going to be a blast. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe. You'll join a community of hundreds of thousands of other trip report enthusiasts exploring the world with me. Hello. And welcome aboard this brand new Eta Airways A321neo. 12 seats across six rows in a splendid 1-1 layout in business class gives everyone both a window and an aisle, although it's not the best layout for couples unless you don't talk to each other. As a new aircraft, the overhead bins are pretty large space saver ones, so there is no trouble fitting in my case. I am really impressed by the style of these cabins. The Stilia Opera reverse herringbone seats look superb and the little details really stand out. I wasn't really expecting to be blown away by this product, but for a medium haul product, this is really quite something. One of the things that stands out is that the finishes aren't quite like any other airline. You still have the great legroom and large TV screen which grace so many business classes now, but there are also quirks like these unique window finishes in dark blue. Quite unusual to find details like that on a European airline. Each seat is angled quite heavily, however, I guess at about 45 degrees. This makes for plenty of privacy, but it does make the window a little further away for everyone. I'm guessing the reason for this fairly steep angle is partly due to the narrow fuselage of the A321. Wow, a pre-departure drink of any sort on a European carrier flying a time than Europe is a rare thing indeed. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Mm.
This seat is remarkable, mostly because it's operating on medium rather than long haul routes, but it contains all the trappings of a long haul seat, like excellent storage, easily accessible USB-A and USB-C power ports, as well as a universal charging socket down below waist level. There's even a water bottle pocket, which I populated with something I may have pinched from the lounge. The aircraft also has overhead air vents, although I didn't discover them until later in the journey. They're actually a bit behind you, so watch out for that. The seat obviously isn't short on legroom and does have a large ottoman area, so you'll be able to put your feet up even while seated in the takeoff position. The table is very sturdy, as you'd expect from a new seat, and does move to allow you to leave while there are things on the table. But be warned, a limitation of this seat is that the gap to enter and exit is really narrow, and noticeably so. Overall, however, the seat is very good, and all the better for finding its way onto a narrow body jet running shorter routes. Eta Airways really leans into their Italian heritage with the drink service. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Aperol, but the offer of Aperol Spritz at 35,000 feet doesn't come up very often, so why not? As with their predecessor airline Alitalia, the short haul food options are really poor. There's no menu to speak of, and the food here comprises a rather weak salad bread, bread, bread and bread with a side of bread. The tiramisu was also really poor. Overall, a really big miss given Italy's excellent food heritage. Pasta, for example, is so easy to serve on board. Oh well, that's just a shame, I guess. For comparison, this is what British Airways serves on this route at breakfast and lunchtime, much more substantial, and Eta definitely has some of the poorest business class food on short haul European flights. We have got something quite unusual on the drinks trolley today, something I've not seen on any other European airline. Limoncello and a nice strong coffee just about salvaged the meal experience. The bed is pretty good. Now, reverse herringbone seats really work well in bed mode as you can get a pretty long bed in the lie flat mode. There is well over six feet of usable space here. ETA provides earphones on this short route to London. I assume these will be upgraded to proper headphones once these aircraft are used on longer routes to Africa. The entertainment selection is a little bit strange. Friends is shown as the example show on the screen here, but it isn't actually available or included anywhere. That's a bit strange. In any case, there are plenty more movies than TV shows. I prefer to watch shorter things on board, but how about you? Let me know in the comments what you think. The flight to Rome is short and sweet, and we are soon about to descend into Fiumicino Airport. Ita closed their onboard service with a delicious Amaretti biscuit. There is one lavatory for business class at the very front of the plane. It's relatively standard, with a baby changing table included, but I do love the Eta Airways branded loo roll. I'm not sure I've seen this on board before. Overall, a very pleasant flight. Eta's short haul food does suck, but the crew were superb. The drinks were delightfully Italian, and the seat is really excellent. It's always a privilege to fly such a well-specified product on such a short route. And I'm looking forward to seeing these aircraft make an impact on Eta's medium haul routes, which hopefully will attract an enhanced meal service, many tickets, and proper headphones, which I'm sure will make it a very competitive product. 
I'm still a bit confused at ETA ordering the NEO. An A321LR or XLR might make a lot more sense as these can flexibly be used on even longer routes to destinations further into Africa or to India for example, although they don't quite have the legs to reach the USA from Italy. In any case, an exciting time for Italy's new airline, which is just like the old airline but with an even better livery. As always, here's my fair disclosure, this trip cost me £389 one way, booked at short notice just a few days before departure. Don't forget to take advantage of today's sponsor, support the channel and get yourself equipped today. Use code WING when purchasing incredible high-spec luggage at sterlingpacific.com forward slash WING. Go check it out, thank you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.